Events. VR Chat is full of events. DJ events, community events, yoga. <laughs> Jeez, I just want I wanna get up now. There's all different types. And today I'm gonna go over some of them. My favorite and my least favorite. Telling you what's worth it, what's fun, and what's not. I feel so groovy in this lemon. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell are you guys doing? What since when is this here? Who wrote smelly gay above my head? It's always been there actually. You just kinda walked into it. So is this how you feel all the time, Yeah. Because we're in virtual reality. Starting with... Music events are the main type you'll come across in VR, mainly DJ events. A world, big or small, with a booth set up to allow a DJ to do their thing in VR. I went to more DJ events than any other during my journey to attend as many events as possible. How do these DJ events work? How do you attend them? Yo, my name is B. White. I run a group called Stray ID, and I, uh, I DJ in VR chat and in real life. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on, we're switching DJs. Oh, okay. I started learning how to DJ in the summer of 2022, and I started DJing in VR in the spring of 2023. When I started playing, um, it was mostly just like pop-up parties or chilling with friends or everybody gets together and we're drinking. You know, after that, I started to discover some some of the, you know, my friends had clubs or, or this group, you know, did parties or, you know, they hosted open decks or there was this kind of event going on or whatever. And they just started gravitating into those circles and met some people that were really awesome and stuck with it. and. Um, yeah, I just kind of splintered from there. So Stray ID, shout out my friend Sungi, he started Stray ID. I, I attended the first one, I attended the second one, the third one, the fourth, and we just started to build a bond together. You know, sometimes there was 20, 30 people, sometimes it was there's two or three of us. Things started picking up for him in his personal life, and he approached me, asked if I'd be interested. I said, of course. Like, like some people start groups because, you know, it's six dudes that really love techno, and that's cool. And some people start groups because they just want a place where everybody wants to come, and that's cool too. For me, has always been like, a space to show off underappreciated or unknown people and kind of platform people that deserve a platform and just can't achieve that or, or can't get those eyes. So Stray ID in VR chat, we do events every second Thursday of the month. Now I need to tell you all that DJ events, at least the typical type of DJ event, isn't my cup of tea. I like the music, but I don't like it being the primary focus. I much prefer the music being a part of a bigger whole, like what we did at the recent Ericor meetup. More on that later. Chill vibes that allow you to relax and talk with friends. It's a social thing. I go to a lot of DJ events, more than any other events in VR chat. They're my favorite. You have a venue or a location, you have organizers and or promoters, and then you also have performers, which could also be the DJs or the VJs, like the visualizers and etc. In a, in a TLDR way, you stream into a video player in VR chat, and then everybody in the world hears it through the video player. Everybody who DJs has some version of a, a DJ software. You have Rekordbox or Serato or something like that, and then you just stream that into OBS, and then there's a group that hosts like a, a low latency CDN is what it's called and not they host a stream um, similar to like Twitch. So you put your CDN link into a stream and then you host it and then you put your stream link into the world and then everybody can hear you. So. And you go there, you attend an event, listen to some music, maybe meet some new people, dance with some friends, have a good time. They enjoy music. I think it's a great way to interact with people, especially if you're looking for people that might have similar music taste to you. I think it's a great place to start off. Social aspect of it, going there with your friends, just hanging out, drinking, talking, catching up on a weekend, and just having a nice DJ in the back, playing some good tunes. Some people I feel can be overwhelmed with variety. When I started DJing, I knew I wanted to play house music. Some people might, might not even know what house music is, um, but there's a community for everything, bro. There's the dubstep people, there's the hard style, break core, J core, anime people. There's the super retro, deep funk, techno, like there's a group for everybody. It can feel a little crazy, but it's like going to the mall, right? Like you got a wad of cash, you want to go buy something at the mall, but there's all these stores. You kind of know what you're looking for, even if you don't know what you're looking for. So you just got to start looking. But yeah, I mean, like I feel like a music event would be just like any other music event that you would attend either in person or, you know, elsewhere online. 
just music. But if you want to go to these events, DJ events, there's only one place you need to know. The best place to find events that are happening in VRChat now, any kind, there's a website called vrc.tl, and it's a timeline. It's like a calendar that is ran and updated by the clubs. So if a club has an event that's happening, they'll make a listing, and then in that listing, it'll show you when and where it's happening, who's playing, and then there's links to their Twitter page or Discord or straight to the group page for VRChat. This is definitely more E people from me. I can feel it already with the with the banners on the side. <laughs> but for those of you that aren't into raves and parties, there's another type of music that can be enjoyed. Live music. Musicians who have the skills and tech to perform in VR in front of a crowd at large events or small. Now, luckily, I was able to interview one of these people. Hi, everybody. My name is Whispers. Uh, I'm a VR artist, uh, and I make music that's inspired by love and friendships in virtual reality. First and foremost, let's get the most important things out. Can I get your very best? Hiya! <laughs> I have played at Ferality, which is probably one of the biggest VR festivals, I would say. I do have a lot of experience with performing in real life too. For example, I played a studio session with my band at a local radio station. Hey, we are Whispers. We play now Nights in the Woods. We are here at the Ö3 studio sessions. Big challenge, I would say, is the latency. Uh, when it comes to interacting with a crowd, I value that a lot. Like I want to, you know, I do a lot of raise your hand if this or that, like raise your hand if you have phantom sense and then try to, you know, talk to the people. And that's quite difficult in VR because of the latency. It has been getting better with event hosts using services with less delay, less latency. But still, that's way easier in real life. <laughs> but we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. I miss the time when you were known. I have a good friend called Corbell, and Corbell organizes a bunch of really big uh, performing events in VR. I've performed at clubs, so I like to be the performer before the DJ start. I feel like that's a lot of fun always, and um, most of the time people enjoy it. You know, the VR Chat Trans Academy, they host like different events on the weekends and in the summer and this and that. And they're always focused on like some some helpful resource for the trans community. But usually they'll have like a little mixer on the side where it's like people can mingle and get to know each other and relax. And they'll have like a DJ plan or somebody, you know, offering some talent, singing or playing an instrument or like, yeah, DJing. So one of the great things about all types of music in this game is that it supplements every other type of event we'll talk about today. The whole reason I got to know about Whispers is because he performed live for another friend at Metronome Bar. A friend of mine had a wedding, like a VR wedding, and he wanted me to perform there. Um, and it was a Russian VR wedding. It was like 80 only Russian-speaking people. It was fantastic. It was <laughs> Music brings people together. Uh, everybody... All, and everybody I know feels that way, right? So it's a good way to break the ice and kind of chill. And it's nice when people, uh, you know, lend their talents to help with stuff like that. It works with a lot of hassle. <laughs> it's uh, not easy. Like, you have to coordinate a bunch of stuff. I'm fully wireless, so uh, I have a wireless in-ear monitoring set that I get the audio from. Uh, I'm on a Quest Pro, so I'm fully wireless there too with virtual desktop. I have my guitar pedals like on the floor uh, i mainly perform acoustic guitar sets uh, in vr chat so i focus on that because it's fun i have this huge plastic brick on my face and i try to uh, play the chords on the guitar while i sing and also interact with the crowd i think interacting with the crowd is a very important part of the whole performance I've attended one, uh, there was a jazz music, music event where they had a whole bunch of jazz musicians play live and some of them were from Japan as well. So it's kind of like, I think it's pretty cool how it has like an international audience. 
instead of just spanning to like one geographical area within the world they gathered a whole bunch of musicians not just like vr chat musicians i don't know if that has their own category in my eyes they're still musicians but there are also certain technologies too where certain bands can play and then their instruments will also sync up so I can definitely recommend Ferality for anybody who hasn't uh, been there yet. It's a whole ritual for me, like, you know, Friday after work, I go shopping, get myself some unhealthy food, some unhealthy drinks, and then I just uh, bunker myself into my bedroom for like three days straight. There are so many panels, so many performances, there are... Um, there's a like a dealer's den where you can look at you know different creative people performing or like portraying their work. It's a magical weekend every time. I sleep in VR there. I breathe in VR. I can only recommend you to check it out. One of the most memorable events I've ever been to was this Japanese-based music event where anyone with an instrument could set up somewhere in the world and perform, like a street performer. And attendees, me, could walk around and enjoy the music. It was super cool. And I only came across it because I joined Longa, who was already there. I joined in on my friend Gummy, actually. Uh... They actually uh, introduced me to that place. I don't know what the formal name of the event is called. I could probably ask them and then I'll, you know, if you want to list it, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Anyways, it's pretty much uh, you have performers that go that go there. Some of them are already pre-planned and you go there and meet and you watch them play live. And then at the end of the meeting, it's kind of like an open mic thing where everybody just kind of, kind of finds their own spot within the map or world. And then they start playing music and people can just walk around, explore the area and see all the different types of musicians playing within that part of the map, which is really cool. And Gummy I was actually there and they performed a little bit too. So yeah, shout out to Gummy. But music isn't the only type of event to enjoy in this game. The one you'll probably stumble across many times by accident. The one you'll probably stumble across many times on accident is uh, smaller, community-based events of all different types. Yo, what's up, man? I'm just hanging out, you know? You're really brave to be here. I'm really unlucky. That, that's, a, that's a different... <laughs> of course, if we're talking about community events, we can't miss my own. Derekor. Derekor. We've done two events so far. One at each milestone, 2.5k subs and 5k subs. The first one was a games event. We hopped around playing different games and at the end, chilled by the campfire, talking, hanging out. The second one, we did more. We played Audience says, Anarchy and VRWare. They saw you. They saw a hypnist. <laughs> Hypnonist. Before B. White, who I interviewed for this video, was kind enough to run a DJ booth. A house party style meetup. I think the Derek Core event was pretty good. It peaked at 52 people. The success of the last two events has allowed us to now do things further, more, bigger. Better. The next event will probably be a more dedicated DJ event with like multiple DJs lined up, like a proper event in, in a world that's, that's not so laggy like the last one. I even have more plans for future events too, but just join the group and keep an eye out. They're record. I think it's going to be cool. I think more people are going to show up, especially when I uh, started talking to the DJs that played after the first set. They're very willing to come by and play their music and hopefully, you know, attract more people to come. So maybe it just be a a big house party thing occasionally whenever you meet your milestone sucking wieners is really freaking serious come in come in hey dara welcome to mcgoobers a little cafe and chill spot i can get you a drink off the menu here reserve coffees lemonades or fizzy aids and also teas it says coming soon but i promise you we have teas okay we have teas real and true another type of community event you'll come across are cafe events Places where people RP running a cafe, whether that's a maid cafe or otherwise. 
one of my longtime friends just so happens to run one of these events. My name is Jamon, and I currently host Magoobers, which is a coffee social VR. We host every Monday and Fridays where we just kind of hang out and, you know, meet new people, but also serve drinks as like the little bit so that we have something to kind of connect with. I'm doing my job. What are you two staring at me? Originally, I wanted to create like something like a cool hangout space for people to just kind of chill and like vibe out and stuff. The name for Magoobers was actually done by one of my friends just randomly and we just stuck with it. So it's kind of goofy, but sort of unique in, in a sense, you know? Very chill, very relaxing, very wholesome. A lot of people just come by, role play being at a cafe, getting their drinks made, getting their food, just talking to friends. It's like a little cafe date. My initial thing is like consistency. It's, it's easy to kind of like put events on like a Monday or a, or, or a Friday when people are doing drinking nights, but really it's all about like kind of just keeping it at a set time, same time every week. And then you make sure like, hey, people know like, you know, it's happening at this point. You can come by within this time frame, come chill out. You can get yourself a seat, beanbag, chair, beanbag, um, complimentary egg. I kind of like light RP, in my opinion. Light RP is just right for me, where I don't have to take it too seriously and I can just have fun. Yeah, I, I like going with the flow. Like, you know, you just walk into like a, maybe like a random black cat. You get seated at, at a table. We got our all of our foods. Uh, we also have food stocked in the fridge, all of our drink ingredients, our main uh, show, which is basically our coffee machine. And we also do make fizzy drinks. So we have an ice machine and cups available as well. Those events are good for making new friends, getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, definitely less high energy than DJ events. So definitely if you're more relaxed, chill person, wanting to make friends, wanting to get out of your comfort zone, talk to people, those events are for you. These types of events are my favorite. No distractions, no loud noises, just a bunch of friends and strangers talking and hanging out with a little something to keep you distracted when the conversation doesn't flow. That being coffee. Over here, nice little cozy, wide area. We not only have little hookah spots and just chill couches to vibe out, but we also have a little cubby if you know you just want to get cozy by the window and look at some stars. Like like what I try to do with Goobers is be like inclusive to like everybody as well. Like you may have your furry hangouts in this and that. You may have your hangouts where there's a lot like populated with e boy e girls drinking this that. Not everybody's comfortable with like all the same thing. Like even with people with disabilities, like uh, like not being able to hear or talk or this or that. You know what I mean? Sometimes like. Fitting in groups can be like difficult. So it was with Magoobers, now that I know sign language and I can cater to my a lot, a lot of mute homies and deaf homies. We've had deaf homies visit our establishment and stuff, but we got a nice little bathroom here. And if you ever feel a little stressed, you know, after the Taco Bell poop, we got free cigarettes in the bathroom. <sighs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Most community events start out as a group of friends finding something fun to do together and expanding it into a proper event. And VR Campers is exactly that. There's a whole spa, but that outdoor spa, it looks really nice. Give that kitty a freaking belly roll. It's a group of friends who's found a way to make hanging out into something more, to camp in VR. It kind of got inspired from when my friend Maxi, uh, Maxi Ren, we were hanging out in a Project Minecraft world, and they had a tent toggle on their avatar. They would toggle it on. When we would go out on an adventure, I thought it was like really cool, and I was like, yeah, I gotta get that someday. A couple months later, that day finally came, and I started adding on to it, and I started adding on to it, all these different toggles. And then wherever I would end up, whether it's 
a music event or even other worlds, I would put down the toggles and then me and my friends would kind of hang out around the area. And then I guess like an idea came up where, you know, we thought we could just like hang out at a certain spot, like maybe like go on a little virtual hike to our campsite and then, you know, set up our tents. And then the rest is like, as you would normally do, I guess, with like real life camping, you know, hang out around the campfire, explore the rest of the world, bring your flashlights in the dark and I don't know, tell stories. We've had a couple of that. I, I think it's pretty fun. It was very cool. I liked it. I love camping. I'm going this summer. Vieira campers, it's a little friends thing where a lot of people actually showed up and it was just a little tour guide through the mountains, thinking like a little VR camping experience based on the name. Very, very cool. Just a place to hang out with friends and talk. It might be a little bit cheesy, but yeah. <laughs> can definitely get to know people a lot more that way too, especially later on in the night when it starts winding down. It gets a lot more intimate. When I say intimate, I mean it allows you to get more close to people and maybe bring up topics that you wouldn't bring up in like surface level. You, you begin to know somebody the overnight and then you could just start, you know, branching off into deep areas while around the campfire. I don't know, I feel like it's a perfect way to connect with people. VR Campers is invite only, which means it really is a community event in the sense of the word. Only that community is allowed to take part. To get in, you need to be friends with us already. The reason I'm showcasing it here is because it's 100% something that anybody could do. These assets are available online. You can add them onto your avatar and do the exact same thing with your friends. I don't mean to gatekeep. It's just not something you want randoms to join in on. It's special to me. It's where people I would call good friends gather and talk, get to know each other on a deeper, more personal level. If you play VR, you're probably a bit out of shape. Others know that and have thought to profit off of your suffering. That's, I mean, that that's a weird way to say it. Like they don't actually, like they don't make money. I mean, they do, but they, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling like the stretch. It's, you know, it's so hard with the trackers, dude. Oh, ah, ah, oh my god, my god. Dude. VR yoga is a group I found by accident. I was just looking up groups in-game and stumbled upon it. I noticed the times that they ran and joined one with a few friends. And tracking issues aside, it was fun. Actually fun. At first, I wasn't really into it, but then, you know, slowly but surely I got the hang of it. And uh, I would say yoga without VR is way more easier, but if you would like, you know, to do yoga with friends and stuff while in VR, then all the power to you. But it was very, very interesting, uh, very stretched, very energized. <laughs> There are paid groups out there too, because there are actual like fitness instructors too that will actually get, put you through a fitness regime, which is pretty awesome. There's a world out there where you can exercise, but also fight. It's kind of like a game. You fight a monster at the same time. Well, you're not fighting a monster, but you're like kind of taking away from its HP, but like interactive exercises. After doing that one session, I felt more limber and energetic than ever. I mean, it's just yoga, but it's in VR. If only I had the place. Ow, ow, that, uh, that's a chair. Now there's a million and a half different types of events I could talk about in this video. Talent shows, language events, improv night, game shows, but I won't talk about those because if I went too in depth with every single event, this video would be six hours long and I'd have more panic attacks than usual and develop a crippling fear of Adobe products. So know that those exist. You can find them. And there are definitely people who love those types of events. And then we can move on. Because there's one thing I want to talk about, and that is the future of events in virtual reality. Starting in this world here, Japan Street. Oh gosh, 
Dude, it's Japan Street. It's huge. Uh, created by Neat Engineer. It's pretty much an entire city or town. And it's super optimized the way they compress their files. Because this world is like 30 something megabytes huge. You got playgrounds, you got a whole school, you got bars, you have even street performers down here at the corner streets. You got uh, convenience stores. You'll find people gathered around and it's just like a random night. And kind of like what you would find at an open mic night. People will gather around the performer, watch them perform, and then after a couple of songs, give three thanks and the next person steps up and it's pretty awesome. I love these types of worlds. Worlds where everything you could ever want is in one world. So many different aspects, and so many different parts, all brought together so you never need to leave. Working bus systems, working trains, little alleyways with all these different things you can see. Heck, Japan Street even has a TV station that runs proper TV shows that they've filmed in VR chat for the world. But it's not just Japan Street, it's here too, in Poly World. Almost similar to Japan Street where it has all these points of interest or locations of interest. You know, you have your shopping center, your campsites, the beaches, clubs, different types of clubs. But it's all based on one world where if you wanted to go bowling, you can actually just walk to the bowling alley. Maybe play a little bit of bowling with your friends. There's pool tables nearby as well. Uh, say you wanted to go listen to some music. Most of the places in that world has their own video player, but there's also, um, if you're familiar with Tanuki Tunes, there's a record shop that they have in that world where you can pick up the, the record disc, actually plop it in, and it'll play. It'll start to play that album uh, that's labeled on the record disc. There's a, there's a gym, and there's a gym portion where it has like a dance room where you can play like Just Dance songs, as you would in like the Pipey Dance Worlds or, you know, the Just Dance Worlds worlds and you can do that all in that same world if only people actually use these worlds more the recent ferality event allowed up to 300 people to enter one instance it was crazy they worked alongside the vr chat devs to bring about what i would argue is the biggest best and most insane event vr chat has ever seen and i want to see those types of things happen more maybe making use of a world kind of like japan street Kinda like Poly World. So, uh, you know what they say about lemon. Y'all know what's up, you turning up on a Tuesday, turn up Tuesday. Imagine 300 people in these streets. You could go to any area and it would be populated. But that's just not the case now. It's empty. Maybe it always will be empty. Okay, the last type of event I'm sure many people were waiting for is something much more private than what I've showed you so far. And that's dance events. Essentially, a dance event is a world hosted by a club that has a collection of dancers that perform either on stage doing some cool dance performance or on your lap. I'm sure you know what they do there. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dancing lemon. Look at me. Ah. Ignore the lemon, because I need to preface this segment by stating I did not record any of the footage you see from the clubs here. In fact, all the footage was taken by the clubs themselves. The reason being is pretty much every club has a rule stating that recording is not allowed and that instead they have their own photographers and videographers. So attendees aren't allowed to record. So people who run these clubs, don't get mad at me, smile. I followed all your rules and now I, I, I can tell you what it's like attending these clubs. Over the last couple of months, I have gone to as many lap dance events as I could. Maybe you saw me at some, maybe you didn't. I want to share with you the true experience you'll find going to 99% of these events. What they're really like. Hello, I am Maple. I don't know if I want to say that I was in it or been in it, still am it. I did a bit of everything in the club scene, uh, both dancing and management wise, though the majority of my time was spent dancing, of course. Let me walk you through the process of attending one of these lap dance events. First is the Discord server. Join their Discord and come across the first hurdle and major problem of most of these events, age verification. 
legally speaking, you can't really stop kids from entering an event. If you want to stay in accordance with like data protection laws and whatnot, you can't demand people to like show ID or any like form of identification to like demand them that before they go into the club. However, you still have a lot of clubs that do that. And I feel like in recent years, that has been kind of the trend. How it should work is like when you go to a corn site, it asks you if you're over 18, you check a box and then you move on. A lot of these clubs though, will ask for ID verification. They expect you to send a picture of your ID with your date of birth and everything else censored. If there's anything you get out from this segment, it's that you should never trust the clubs who ask for ID because they have no idea what they're doing. And you probably don't know how much people can learn about you from that single picture. Once verified though, you can then add the event account. And that'll be how you get into the event in the first place. Event time comes, you request, you get in and the event starts. So like from an attendee perspective, you would join the world. You'll more than likely be waiting around in like the entrance section for a while while uh, the club gets everything ready in the back, which is like making sure all the dancers are there, doing attendance, uh, making sure that the music is set up, all of that stuff. And then when everything is ready, you go in and hopefully the events run smoothly and you just get to sit down, relax, watch some dancers, um, chat some shit with your homies by your side and just have a good time. So a bit more behind the scenes of like from a management perspective, there is a lot of managing the dancers that go around. Most clubs will organize it in like different shifts where you have a set amount of dancers dancing for X amount of songs. So a lot of the time goes to kind of like managing between those different shifts, making sure all the dancers are there, checking if they have any technical difficulties and then finding a replacement for them, and making sure the music running good, that there's no issues there, making sure attendees are behaving. It's a lot of just making sure that the events run smoothly without issues because if everything goes well they kind of just run themselves and you just kind of get to sit along for the ride and enjoy it. The whole essence of a lap dance event is that you have a bunch of people around in a very like club-esque scene. There's a lot of like flashing lights, uh, very like tight knit. And the main thing of it all, you have a lot of dancers running around. We refer to it as like lap dance events, though it's not exclusively the whole style of lap dancing. The people who just do normal like hip hop, break dance, voguing, uh, any kind of like genre you can imagine. You have a bunch of dancers going around dancing. You have some good music, some hosts, and of course like staff connected to everything that kind of just make sure the whole events run as they should. I have a lot to say about these dance events, especially about the worlds that they take place in. But I'm going to leave all that for another video I have planned in the future. So look forward to that, and let's move on to the real question I'm sure everyone has had while watching. The real question is, how do you find these events? And how do you go to them? And that's the real problem. Aside from DJ events, there's no real understood hub for most of these events. DJ events have VRC.tl. It's a fantastic example of what we could have if these communities were to come together and make something helpful for the community, letting everybody know when certain events are and how to attend them. But that's limited to DJ events. Say you wanted to go to a live music event or any community event, you're out of luck. I would say most of the time it happens through Twitter. Like I get to know a lot of organizers and events and parties through Twitter. There is no real like main hub to get to know these places. Unfortunately, I know of some projects who kind of try to do that. You know, I think none of them really managed to become a big hub. Honestly, you can find a lot of stuff just by seeing worlds and now that you have group and group publics you can see like okay who's the homies that usually hang around here but other than that it's word of mouth like if your friend is part of this night then you join off that friend and then you be part of that night and then you maybe go back to that same instance you know in the future talk to people like talking to friends friends who know friends but yeah you just have to kind of get into that scene through connections and through twitter there's no other way i think right now unfortunately now, there are a couple resources to use. The VR Events Hub is one. That's how I was able to find the VR Yoga event. But everything else I found on there was a bit lackluster. There's a couple things I wish VRChat had. One is to be able to host
private group instances where you could then invite specific people in the group through the website. It would make things easier for any event that requires you to pay to get in. It would make casual private events so much easier as well. We can't be expected to add every single person you might want to invite to an event. There could be hundreds. And normal group instances are hard to control unless you make a specific role just for that event. And that's well and good, but once that event's done, that role is now useless. Being able to invite people through the group would solve that issue completely. Two would be an event listings of some type. I know VRChat has been advertising events on the launch pad recently, or just groups, I guess, but that's just not good enough. There's so many groups and events in this game that deserve a chance in the spotlight, and no real way for them to advertise. God knows spending money to get a poster in Midnight Rooftop isn't going to attract too many people, and it costs money. I want a dedicated page for events. Even if it's just on the website, that would be sick. I don't know, man. Like, a man can dream. Maybe one day. Maybe, maybe one day. I don't think there's one group that's more worthy than another. Um, everybody deserves their time and their spot. So I definitely encourage people, like if you're if you're into music or if you're into the club scene and you're looking for like a safe or more comfortable alternative, uh, it's a it's a fantastic place to come. So you might not you might not click, you might not land on the first one. It might be six dudes that really like techno that just don't want to be your friend. That's okay. That doesn't mean they're assholes, bro. You just you know find where you fit, and you know somebody will so somebody will bring you in. Monday, Friday, 7 p.m. CST. Come check out McGoober's. We have coffee and fizzy drinks. My coworker doesn't work, but they also don't get paid. You should definitely check out my stuff uh, on Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Just search for WHSPRS. Uh, I just released an album a couple of months ago. It's called Sad, Drunk, and Needy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, get involved in the club scene. It's kind of fun. Um, don't show your ID to strangers on the internet. Check out events. There's more to VR chat than just random world hopping and like running into random strangers because I feel like events actually give you more reason to interact with people, explore. It, it can allow you to explore your own interests, whether it's music, dance, exercise, uh, world exploring, photography, videography. There's communities for those. If you attend some of these events, you might run into someone and then, you know, it kind of dominoes from there like snowballs. So they'll introduce you to someone else that can take you to another group or event. And then it just opens up a whole new world to you. Everybody should at least try to go to a VR chat event at least once, you know, to see how it is. And there's a lot out there. Pick your poison.